Hey everybody, Lee with LG Speed and Custom here and welcome to part seven of Shannon's 302 swap in her 1961 Comet. Thanks for joining us again on Shannon's 302 swap. Um, if you'll remember in the last video, we put a fuel pump in this car. So we're gonna start this video off with taking the fuel pump out of this car. Let me show you. So here's the Spectra 1130 electric fuel pump that we installed in the last video. So I rolled the car in here, put it up on jack stands and was talking on the, the phone and about 20 minutes goes by and I kind of could smell gas a little bit. Got off the phone, come back over to the car and realize there is a lake of gas underneath it. And I don't know what's going on here, but watch when I take this clamp off the fuel line. We've got fuel just gushing out of the fuel pump. And I have no idea why. I did a little investigating, took the wires off and if you wiggle this, it kind of, I don't know, it's coming out of wherever these wires go into. So I'm not sure what's up with that. We'll uh, probably take this out and go back to the parts store and get another one. I think we'll start this video off with that. Uh, a couple other things we're gonna do while we go to the parts store is we've gotta start building exhaust for this thing. So I've got some donuts here that fit the manifolds. I think we'll go over and over to the muffler shop and get a couple little pieces flared so that they will fit that properly. And then we can start building an exhaust system. Uh, another thing we can do in this video is we've got our completed drive shaft back from Ken. So it's all paint it up and that can go back in the car now and then we can put some transmission fluid in it finally. We've also got all the stuff to build the throttle linkage as well as a copper oil pressure line. So we'll be doing that stuff as well. And of course we got a bunch of other things to do that are on the list. So, but we're gonna start with that fuel pump because it kind of stinks and I'd rather, I wanna get that solved sooner than later. So let's pull that out and we'll head over to the parts store. Just leave an island muffler. We stopped to see Ty and he hooked us up with, we got a couple flanges that fit these donuts really nice. And I brought this scrap piece of stainless and he just flared the ends on that. So I think that is everything we need for the start of the exhaust system. We'll go over to bumper to bumper now and see Rick. Successful mission at bumper to bumper. We got a new fuel pump to replace the leaky one. They just exchanged it straight across, which was super cool. Uh, we got a new wire to go from the solenoid down to the starter. It's the one that was on there. Looks like it's the original one to the car, super crusty. And we got some shocks for my 32 Ford. So I'll put those on in another video at a later date. Okay back to the shop now. New pumps ready to go back in, threaded the fittings back together, marked my in and out, 
positive and negative. And when I put the put the bracket, this mounting bracket back on, while I was sitting on the bench, I realized that if I I can cut like almost two inches out of here just to get this like two inches closer to the floor so that it's it was hanging down a little bit more than I liked. It was still higher than the fuel tank, so I wasn't concerned about it hitting anything. But I thought, you know, it'd only take two seconds to chop that and weld it back together and get it two inches closer. So let's put it back under the car now. All right, we're all back together here. I really like this being mounted up a little bit higher. So I also put a fuel filter in, which I totally forgot to do in the last video until somebody in the comments was like, hey, you should put a fuel filter in there. I was like, ah, oh, that's, that's a brilliant idea. So I had a whole bunch of these fuel filters that we got at the Monroe Swap Meet. I think there's, you can buy them there in bulk for pretty cheap. So we got a bunch of those, use that guy up. So I think our fuel pump is back in business again. Moving along. All right, I think our next step is Let's put this drive shaft in and see how it fits. Hopefully it fits all right. I measured it twice. Oh, that worked out very nice. We have a drive shaft. Huge thanks to Ken at All Tech Machine and beautiful Rock Bay for the drive shaft work. All right, let's cross drive shaft off the list. Transmission fluid is the last thing on the transmission list. I think I'll let Shannon take care of that. She put the transmission filter and gasket and everything in, so that way if it leaks, she can clean it up. <laughs> um, I think I'm gonna take a break for the night. It's actually, it's Thursday evening, and Shannon works Thursday night, and uh, I actually kinda ran out of stuff to do during the day today on uh, Aaron's 33 Ford and Gord's 32 Roadster. Waiting for parts on the 32 Roadster and Aaron's 33 pickup, I gotta get him to come down and sit in the truck and he can't do that till tomorrow. So I had a little bit of spare time this afternoon, so we got a bit of a jump start on this. So I think I'm gonna take a break for the rest of the night and we'll come back tomorrow morning and continue on. Good morning. It is Friday and Shannon's working from home today, which means she can help out in the shop. So we're gonna start mounting the exhaust, um, which is gonna be really easy because we're just gonna hook it right into these lake pipes. Shannon got these lake pipes at the Monroe Swap Meet last year. They've just been sitting in a box waiting. So we'll get them mocked up on there and then figure out some brackets. Probably about there. We've got the pipes sitting pretty much where we want them. So I went and cut out four of these brackets here. And what these are gonna do is, pretend this is the lake pipe. These are gonna weld to the backside of the lake pipe. And then I got some sway bar bushings here. So we can kind of mount it like that to the floor. There's not a lot of options under this car for mounting them because it's a unibody car. So pretty much the floor pan or the rocker panel is the best bet and the, the floor pan makes a lot of sense. We can also, I slotted them so that you can slide the pipe in and out closer to the rocker or further away. 
And then with, uh, if we have a 3 8 bolt going through the floor, you can just put shims in here to raise and lower the pipe. So I think we'll pull that pipe out and weld these guys to the backside. Well, that worked out pretty good. Let's mock this pipe back up in here, get it where it's supposed to be sitting, and then we can figure out where we're gonna drill our holes in the floor. I think that looks pretty good. Up there, maybe a little further back. Trying to get the same distance from the front of the pipe to here as to there. I think that's Pretty much got it. All right, we'll go underneath now and drill some holes. So here's our little sway bar mount up there. So we're just kind of gonna get center in that slot and make a little mark with this pin here. So obviously there's a little bit of a gap in here, but we can put some spacers in there to take that up. There we have it. Lake pipes are mounted up. I might trim these down later. I want to leave them because I need that much thread to, to get everything started because these compress quite a bit. So if I cut them off, if we ever take these off and go to put them back on, I'll have to put new bolts in. So I might try it first. And I mean, as long as they don't rub on the ground, then it's fine. So I think we'll uh, do this to the second pipe now, and then we'll connect the lake pipes to the manifolds. Second pipe's done. That took a fraction of the time from the first one. So we can start with the rest of the exhaust system now. So yesterday, Ty flared these two ends and we got some flanges from him. So I think our first step will be, we're just gonna cut this in half and then we've got one for the driver's side, one for the passenger side. We'll get that bolted up in the car and then I, I don't have a plan from there. We're just gonna wing it. But first we'll cut it. Step one, cut it. Step two, don't know. I know I said I was gonna cut it in half, but I went under the car and measured and our on the passenger side, we only need to come out about three inches and then it's gotta kick down. So I just cut it to three inches. And the driver's side one, I think we're gonna have to cut down a little bit too. But we'll worry about that one later. I'm just gonna focus on the passenger side for now. So this flange, we'll go like that. This guy sits in there and then that'll get bolted to the manifold. So that's bolted in there, just finger tight for now. We're back about three inches. So next we're going to take, when I build stainless exhaust, I buy all these, these are like pre-bent 45s and pre-bent 90s. And these actually aren't for exhaust. They're actually for building like plumbing breweries and milk factories and stuff like that but they work really nice because they're they're perfect 90s they're a little bit thicker than exhaust tubing so they're a little nicer to weld and you can also they have straight pieces as well i think they come in 24 foot lengths so i got a bunch of those and it's just it's really nice to work with so coming off of there if we take this 45 and put it on kind of like that. It gets it pointing in the right direction. 
We could have come back a little bit further, but the further back we come, the closer we get to the floor. And this is where my feet are gonna be when Shannon's driving, and I don't wanna get hot feet, so. We'll keep it a little bit a ways from the floor. That's pretty good there. So I think I'll get a tape measure and start measuring. We just, we basically have to come down to here and then go into here. So not a complex exhaust system at all. Hopefully it shouldn't take too long. So I apologize, I have not filmed a lot of building this because this is a job that kind of needs three hands and when you're holding a camera, that is less than three hands. So here's what I've tacked together. This end bolts to the manifold, comes down here, kicks over, and then this flange here will bolt to the lake pipe. So I'm gonna mock it up one last time to make sure everything fits and then we can final weld it. There it is bolted in. It comes down along the, the firewall, kicks over, goes underneath the little subframe guy here. And then I've got a flange that connects it to the lake pipe. So I think we can pull this all off and weld it together now. And then this side will be done. I'm ready to weld this up. So because this is stainless, you can't just go and weld it, TIG weld it like you would regular tubing. Stainless needs to be purged. So I've got on my TIG welder here, I've got a little T fitting here. So we can open this guy up and that allows this gas to go to the TIG torch. And then this gas line here runs along and I've got it in the end of the pipe here. The other end we've got capped off. And what that will do is when we turn our gas on, it's going to fill this full of argon. And that will get rid of all the, the oxygen in there because the oxygen, when you're welding, like the, the reason you have gas come out of here is to shield the weld from oxygen so it doesn't get contaminated. And stainless is very sensitive to that. So by doing this, we can weld it and know that it's gonna be a nice clean weld on both sides. This is all welded up now. So these flanges that I welded on here, unfortunately, they are not stainless. I was originally gonna put this together with V-band clamps, but I realized that the V-band clamps I have are the wrong size. So I had these flanges, so we'll use those. This one here is welded onto the lake pipe. So I've masked the chrome off, and we'll just take a little bit of black header paint and touch up paint these, paint these, this guy here, and we'll paint this flange. And then this side can go together. Shannon's been working away on this end, she's got a oil pressure line, copper one plumbed in there. Did a very nice and neat job on there. She's got the gas pedal mounted. This is just, uh, it's like a low car style. We got her to swap meet for like 20 bucks. So I like using these. They're a lot easier than trying to modify the original pedal. And right now she is putting together some breather caps. Well, it 
Saturday morning. I'm gonna put that passenger side exhaust system together and start on the driver's side. We had a little bit of a snag yesterday, a little bit of, a, of an uh-oh in our plan. Shannon started filling the engine with coolant and we discovered that this intake manifold is leaking coolant out of here at an alarming rate. So that kind of, it was at that point yesterday when we decided to take a break and start over again today. So I don't know if we're just going to save that problem for another day and I'll just keep going with the exhaust and there's a couple other things to do. Or if, if Shannon's ambitious today, we might pull this intake off. Got a couple options. This intake is, it's seen some things. This corner that's leaking, you can see a big weld mark where that corner has been broken off and welded back on. So I'm assuming that's why it's leaking. So we might pull it off, get a new set of gaskets, get a tube of right stuff, gasket maker, and just give it a nice, good, thorough coating of right stuff and squeeze it back together and hope it seals. Or plan B, which is probably the better plan, would be to just get another intake. But we don't have another intake right now. And the intake manifold that I've always wanted to put on this car is you can get it brand new again. It's finally back in stock at Edelbrock, the, the RPM performer. But it's 450 bucks. That's a lot of that's a lot of money. So I don't know. We might try the see if we can get it to seal with right stuff first. So on that note, I'm gonna put the exhaust back together. Shannon's still finishing up breakfast, so she'll probably be down in a bit. some intake gaskets in stock called Rick at Bumperland unfortunately he doesn't have any but uh, Bob at Key 2 has some so we're ripping over there now to pick them up Shannon's digging into the intake manifold. I'm gonna go back underneath and button this exhaust up. So this is our problem area right here. We had just, just the gaskets. We didn't have any right stuff or anything on there. So I think if we do this again, but this time we'll put right stuff around this port here on both sides of the gasket. And I think I'm pretty confident that will, that'll work, that'll do the trick. Only one way to find out. This is the right stuff if you were curious as to what I'm talking about. It's just a gasket maker. I think it's made by Permatex. It's really, really good stuff. It's the right stuff for the job. While Shannon was pulling that apart, I got this side all bolted together. I've got a gasket in here and I also use a little bit of high temperature gasket maker. You can see a tiny bit squeezing through there just to give it even more of a seal. We've got all our mounts buttoned up here and this thing is nice and firm. I think it'll be okay. So I'm gonna start on the other side now. This side is pretty much gonna be the same concept except for instead of the manifold coming out here like it does on the passenger side, it comes out here. So we'll have to come down, go underneath this cross link 
and then come back and into here. Shannon went and gooped that up with some right stuff. Then we let it sit for the amount of time as it takes to make a tray of chicken nuggets. And then uh, torqued it down. So she's just gonna, hey, this is mine. Beat it. So yeah, now we're just gonna put everything back together. Yeah, look at that. It's full. And it's not running on the ground. Nope. I think we got it. <laughs> Either that or it's running inside the engine. Cool. Um, I guess you can keep putting stuff back together then. Sweet. High five. Okay, can you sit? Shake a paw. Down. Wait. Touch. Dance. Good girl. Okay, you wanna show them your next trick? Sit. Wait. Okay. Pretty smart dog. So before we put the distributor back in, we're gonna take this opportunity to prime it. So this is a distributor priming tool, which is just a 5 16 socket on a long shaft. And if you go down the distributor hole, the top of the oil pump is there, and this will fit on top of the oil pump shaft. And if you attach it to a drill, spin it in reverse, it will make the oil pump turn and build oil pressure. That's what we're going to do next because we have no idea how long this engine's been sitting. Okay, attach your drill. Uh, you'll want to run the drill in reverse. All the way, full speed. So while Shannon's doing that, we can go in the car and watch the oil pressure gauge. Look at that, we got 20 pounds, keep going. Oh, the battery died. Well, we got 20 pounds oil pressure, so that'll probably be enough. Yeah, look at that, 60 pounds. I've got this passenger, sorry, driver's side tacked together and all mocked up in here. And I think it's gonna work okay. I've cycled the steering lock to lock and we've got good clearance in here. That's really the only thing we gotta worry about. So I think we can pull this off and weld it up now.
All right, this pipe is done. That worked out really good. Shannon's got the top end pretty much all back together. She is just installing the throttle linkage right now, which is just a low car cable. Once again, this stuff is incredibly simple to use. That's why I like to use it. So, And it'll even go in through the original hole in the firewall where the original throttle linkage came out. And then we'll just have a cable going up to here and should work. Try it. Throttle linkage, done. Okay, let's see how our list is doing. Throttle linkage is done. Oil pressure is done. This whole section is done. Over on this side, hood rod, still have to paint and put that on. Exhaust is done. Lake pipes are done. Valve cover breathers, valve cover breathers are done, right? Yep. Valve cover breathers are done. So all that's left, we still gotta put transmission fluid in it. We still gotta mount the generator, which I've been avoiding because we don't have any brackets or anything. We gotta build everything from scratch. It's gonna suck. And then we can figure out our belts. The hood rod isn't important right now, but yeah, we made some good progress today. Some new stuff that we gotta do. We gotta reset the timing on the distributor. Timing top dead center and we need to fix the starter so back under the car here back to our flex plate debacle issue that we've been fighting the whole time with this build so this starter we had to modify this plate to get the starter to fit and it's not quite a hundred percent perfect and this weight is hanging up on the plate right here because the starter instead of going through it is kind of pushing the plate in a little bit so i don't think it's a huge deal to fix that we just got to take the starter out and ream this hole a little bit bigger and i think that'll that'll sort itself out it'll be fine then so that's when we were priming it with the oil pressure and stuff we were rolling the engine over and it got to that point and got stuck so we messed around with it a bit and found out what the problem is. Now we just need to address it. We're not gonna have time in this video to deal with the, the starter situation, but we just put the car back on the ground and wow, look how good those lake pipes look. It's so low. I can just slide my foot under it. Well, that's gonna conclude this video. We've got so much progress done on this thing and it is so close. We probably have like another, probably another day by the time we finish screwing around with a little bit of stuff and then this thing should hopefully fire up and do burnouts, hopefully. I don't know, We've, we don't know any history on this engine. Like I said earlier, Shannon bought this engine for 300 bucks off Marketplace. The guy pulled it out of his 91 Mustang. Why he pulled it out, I don't know. Maybe, hopefully it's not pooched, but I mean, it could be. It seemed to have good oil pressure when we were cranking it over. And before Shannon detailed and painted it, we pulled the pan off and looked at the bearings. They looked fine. Everything was nice and clean inside. So he said it only had, what, 178,000 kilometers on it, which I don't know what that is in miles, not a clue, but it's low. It's not a lot. So hopefully it's okay. The C4 transmission, that's also, that was just a marketplace thing we don't know any history on it but hopefully it all works <laughs> um, so anyways thanks very much for watching as always make sure to check out the website lgspeedcustom.com to get yourself a lg speed and custom shirt you can't see my shirt at all but um it's there believe me uh so yeah get yourself a hot rod shirt if you want to support this channel or stickers 
Uh, thanks to the Cavaleros for the music on this video, local Victoria surf band. You guys have heard them a ton on this channel. We like using them a lot. And yeah, I guess we'll, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks so much for watching. anymore.